Violeta Inc. I'm Elena Cáceres. Today we're going to be coloring this image by the ton called Transformation. There is a Copic recipe uh, download in the description box. We're going to start with the wings. This butterfly is going to have BG78 first, and then BG75 and BG72. Right now, we're gonna be starting with V09, V06, and V04. We are gonna be repeating this process many times in the wings, so we're gonna speed up the video in a moment, but I'm gonna be explaining to you every single one of the parts. At the end of this part, I am using VG72 again because it was too long. I needed a little bit more. And this is VG70. This is gonna help V04 and VG72 to melt together. So we start with VG78, just a little bit. We're not extending that one a lot. After that, we're going with VG75 and BG72. Remember, BG75 is gonna be a little bit longer than BG78. BG72 is gonna be longer than that. On the other side, we start with V09, V06, and V04. We're starting here again. BG78, BG75, and a little bit longer BG72. Same process on the other side. V09, V06, and V04. I am using BG70 when I believe that I didn't leave enough space uh, between V04 and BG72 when I believe that it's too dark. BG78 and V09 are the darkest in each one of these um, colors, in the aqua and the violet. So we're gonna be using very little of it. The next one, which is gonna be for the BG78, is gonna be BG75. It's a little bit longer, a little bit slower. And we end it with BG72. With the violet, we start with the V09, the fastest flicks that we do. The medium speed is going to be V06, and the slowest is V04. We want to have the most ink from the two of the lightest, VG72 and V04. That was V09, this is V06, and V04 in the bottom of the line of this wing. I am making the lines, the flicks, longer. Short, longer now. The same thing is gonna happen with the medium color. The longest is gonna be the one in the bottom. This is V09, V06, in V04. If we were to only have the two of the darkest, BG78 and V09, they're almost touching in the bottom of these lines. This is VG75. V09. V06. And we ended with V04. And this is VG70. Same process, this is gonna be a little bit longer. So my VG78 is gonna be a little bit longer. This is VG72. This is V09. 
See how it's almost touching with BG78. That's the illusion we wanna give, that the top part of these lines are lighter and the bottom are a little bit darker. This is BG72, I felt that it needed a little bit longer. Same process, we go one on top of the other, the darkest is the fastest, this is VO9, VO6, and VO4. On our Facebook group, we are adding units. Unit one was how to clean your copics. Unit two is about blending. You will see in real time how to blend. Blending is a chemical reaction. It does not matter how many times you scrub it with your markers, you are not getting the blend. Because of it, you're gonna get the blend depending on the ink that is deposited into the paper. I'm gonna leave a link on the description box so you can go and see it. It's a short three minute, three or four minute uh, unit and we're gonna be adding units every so often, every week or two. We're gonna start with the same process, VG70A, VG75, and 72. When I started coloring, I saw how talented some people are. And I had never touched a marker or a pencil, color pencil, before I started learning from Vanilla Arts. Um, so I thought I'm not gonna learn, I'm not gonna be able to do what these people do. But then you realize that while you cannot get talented, you can get skilled. I do not believe that I'm a talented person. I, uh, I have the skills to show you how to color. So what, how do you get to that with practice? These kind of images give you that practice. You do it all the time as best as you can. Every single one of your strokes counts. If you practice all your strokes as best as you can, you will get to the point that every single one of your strokes is always better. This is VG78, VG75, and VG72. VO9, VO6, and VO4. And again, I'm using BG70 to soften the edges of the two lightest colors. So the transition is a little bit softer. It's okay to leave some strokes showing. This is a organic bean. <laughs> it's a butterfly, she's alive. She's from nature, is not gonna be perfect. BG70 has a lot of colorless blender. It is gonna make your VG72 and VO4 lighter. So use it carefully because you don't want it to go all the way to VG75 or VO6. It will wash out the color that you already placed there. There's no point. Every single one of these lines that this butterfly has is getting the same treatment. Just the smaller ones are gonna get a little bit less of the darker colors.
This is VO9, VO6, and VO4. Coloring is like everything we do. The more we practice, the better we get to it. The faster you get to it. This is BV72. VO9, VO6, and VO4. I have colored this butterfly five times. I didn't like some colors, some others I did, but I used too much of the dark. Some others I used too much of the light. It's always a process. This is VO9, VO6, and VO4. I am using BG70 to give it a little bit more lightness. We're going to start with the flowers. The flowers are going to be this burnt yellowish color. We're going to start with Y28. And yes, it's going to be like a jerk color. Once you add Y26, it's going to look golden. And a Y23 is going to give it a softer look. Same process. Y28, we start at the um, center of the flower. This is a petal that you can barely see. So it's going to be having a lot of darkness. So we're using a lot of the Y28 and only a coat of Y26 on top of it. This petal is under the other. It's under this little flap. So that is Y28. On top of it, we're going to go slower with Y26 and we're going to end it with Y23. The process, it is the same thing. Fastest is Y28. Slower is going to be Y26. And then to finish the blend is Y23. This little flap is under, uh, is the bottom of the flower, of the petal. So that's why it gets all Y28. That was Y28. A little bit more here because this petal is under another petal. So we will have some shade. And we're gonna end it with white Y23. The first thing I do when I choose an image is I study it. I make sure that I know what objects are on top of the other. Is this petal on top of this other petal? It will have some shade. It will have some shadow. Is this on top of it? Does it have more shadow? And the shadow has to be proportionate to the side size of the petal that is on top of it. It is better for me, and I believe it will be better for you if you study your image before you start coloring. We're gonna be posting this type of videos, the coloring videos, more often. So do not forget to subscribe to the channel and click the notification button so every time that we upload one of these or one of the cards, you will get notified. We're gonna do the same treatment to the three of a kind flowers. Uh, we have that one in the middle, and then we have this little one that is on the top of it. Same treatment, Y28, Y26, and Y23. Every single one of these pe petals is gonna have the same treatment. The only reason I would only use Y28 and Y26 only would be because it's a tiny petal that is under the others.
this is Y28, Y26, and Y23. These are some little bulbs that the image has. So then I decided to use the yellows on this one. Y28 and Y26 only. They're tiny, so they're still full of pigment. We are starting with the violet flowers. We're starting with V09. VO6 and VO4 at the end of the petals is going to have BG72. Same treatment, every single one of the petals. Now I will let you see all this process, all these petals, they're the same thing. VO9. VO6, VO4, and BG72. Every single one of them. So I will see you when we start the leaves.
We're going to start with the leaves now. We are going to be underpainting. What does that mean? We are going to be using B34 where the leaf starts and on the side that you want this leaf to be the darkest. We start in the wherever the leaf is coming from and then we darken a little bit of the side. It doesn't matter what side, any side you like, that's the one we're using. Every single leaf is gonna get this treatment. And now we're gonna use G99. The colors that we are using, the palette that we're using, it's a little bit on the fall kind of theme. So we are using this green that it's a little bit more of how the leaves will look in fall. And that is why we're using G99 and G94. The leaves are pretty small. That's why we're only using these two colors. We're not using the three. That was G99. And we're gonna end it with G94. Same process applies. G99 goes the fastest, and then G94 is gonna be slower. The slower you use your marker, the more ink you deposit into the paper. The more in ink to the paper, the better your blend. G99 has to cover all that you apply with B34. G94 is not strong enough to actually cover it. Then you will be able to see the lines and that's not what we do want. This is G99 and we're gonna end it with G94. Here I'm doing a couple of leaves at the same time. The ink will not have time to dry since they're so small. And this is G94. G99 and G94. By this time, you might be tired of coloring. You don't have to finish the whole piece in one sitting. You can do a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow. The idea is for you to have fun, to practice as best as you can every single time. That's how you will get better. That's how your skills will get better. That's how your skills will be more refined. You will be able to color faster and better. For the body on this butterfly, we are going to use the Strettler Tri Plus Fine Liner in black. It's going to be a solid black. And then when I was stamping uh, this image, there was little parts of the solid black that I didn't catch. So that's what I used. Now this is dark, uh, dark purple, no, it's indigo blue. Indigo blue is gonna help us give the final details to this butterfly. I am tracing, I am going over where we use the darkest of our colors, which is going to be BG78. Uh, it's gonna go on the side and then a little bit more 
we are going to make sure that we separate every single one of these lines for the butterfly. It's pushing it deeper, so it gives it a little bit more dimension. Take a picture of your project when it only has Copic markers. And then take a picture with it once you finish all the details with the color pencils. You will see the difference. Right now that you're doing it, it might not seem like such a big difference, but once you do, once you take a picture, you will see it. And we're gonna use this same indigo blue to push a little bit of the leaves where we use B34. That's where we used a little bit of this. It's only to give the illusion that the leaves are under the flower, that they're under other leaves. Every single one of them is gonna get the same treatment. Now we're going to start using dark purple. We are going to do the same treatment that we did before with the indigo blue butt and the violet parts of the butterfly. We're going to be applying this where we have V09, where V09 started. We're giving an extra coat just so we can make it look deeper. I was going to edit this part out where I'm sharpening my pencil, but I thought to tell you that every time you're doing this, your pencil needs to be very, very sharp if it's not. It's not gonna scratch the tooth of the paper. You're just gonna be doing it on the top layers of the paper and it's not gonna look as deep. It's not gonna look as vibrant. So you always need to have your pencils very, very sharp. I decided that I wanted a deeper um, color right here where we use the violet. So I'm using a little bit more of the indigo blue on top of it. I'm doing the same thing for everybody else. This is white. There's some parts that I decided I wanted a little bit lighter. Just look at your image. Do you need more? Do you want less? These are just the highlights of it. This is dark purple. We are gonna push these petals right where they meet and we're gonna color in the one that is in the bottom. This is this will separate the petals a little bit more. Give them more dimension, more depth. Now we're doing a lot of highlight. These butterflies have these white dots on the side of their wings. So I'm using a Sharpie water base paint in white to do this. If you look at a photo, 
they're not gonna be all equal they're not like three here three there three there there are two here four there three there now these are highlights this is up to you do you want more highlights i love highlights so that's why i'm using all of this you don't have to but you can if you want to Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification button so you always get notified when we post a new video. And I'm adding just more highlight. And this is going to be our final project. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.